testosterone plus an anivar cycle. This is so common. This video is going to be harm reduction as so many men in the world trust me and conduct consultations with me on this particular topic, especially in the summer. Men are on testosterone or testosterone-related base cycle of steroids, and they add commonly Anovar. This video is not supporting the use of this or anabolic steroids per se, as all anabolic steroids can have significant side effects and cause harm. I am providing this video as a part of a harm reduction technique to provide those who may decide to use this classic combination, testosterone plus Anovar, to minimize your suffering, to minimize the potential harmful medical issues that can occur. Because I see this commonly. You should always stay in touch with your healthcare provider, a nurse practitioner, a doctor, anyone who that may be, especially when you're on anabolic androgenic substances or any performance enhancing drug. These medications can cause significant harm and you're going to want to stay in touch with these experts. Let's start right off with reviewing Anovar for what this medicine is. See my video, Anovar. Anovar exandrolone is an oral anabolic steroid derived from DHT. It possesses great anabolic activity, approximately six times that of testosterone, with considerably less androgenicity versus testosterone. As a sole agent, it has negligible estrogenic and progestational activity. Historically, this is a medicine still prescribed in America and in other countries abroad. It's thought of as a mild oral anabolic steroid and was marketed in the 1960s in America and abroad for the promotion of lean tissue during catabolic illness, for an example, and we still see this used today. Burns, severe burns in the ICU, status post-surgery, catabolic issues relating to surgery, trauma, infection, significant prolonged infection when people are in the hospital, prolonged corticosteroid administration, that's prednisone for people that have rheumatoid arthritis, significant asthma, inflammatory bowel disease, which I see this all the time, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis. It's been used classically for decades for this to offset the corticosteroid effect and the catabolic effects. And there are a lot of, a whole host of other non-rheumatologic diseases and non-specific rheumatologic diseases in which people use prednisone or corticosteroids. And also, this drug has been historically used for the mitigation of osteoporosis and also with women. Of course, today we don't see it like this, but we see it with the burn centers and the significant infections. And we're seeing it come back in more medical centers for that. Absolutely incredible. We also see it in AIDS wasting and alcoholic hepatitis. So Anovar, as a sole agent, has some positive features for sure. But we know that you can't live on it chronically. And even in the limited medical scenarios, it's going to have side effects. Let's talk about how it's used and what I see and all the anecdotal information I see for men using it on TRT and an add-on to base testosterone esters in, with other steroids in cycles. I usually see it added on to TRT, for an example, for a limited period of 6 to 12 weeks. I think everyone's going to know that. Let's talk about the systems. Let's take a systems approach on how I could provide relief 
and protection for you if you consider doing this. Starting off with the neurologic, central nervous system right up to the top. It's true that men report as they're adding this on to testosterone, they can have better clarity, better mood, certainly a better libido in addition to the testosterone. This is going to be man per man. And the concern for me is that these things certainly can happen, but it could disturb an underlying mood disorder, a depression or an anxiety. I see this all the time. While you're on the Anivar added cycle to your TET, or when you're withdrawing and you're coming off. We know that Anivar is a classic medication and drug that will lower the sex hormone bond euglobulin, and therefore liberate and increase the free testosterone. Classically, when a man is on testosterone esters, this is the base philosophy. This is the base clinical science that I'm going to run through from head to toe. It's interesting that in the libido, men will say in the beginning they have increased thoughts of sex and more increased spontaneous erections. But again, the concern is you're resetting and you're setting up a scenario in your central nervous system that you're increasing your free testosterone. This could be with any other drug, Proviron or any of the other add-on drugs that you're now going to set up this hyperstimulation in your CNS that at the moment may certainly lead to a beneficial state with mood, concentration, libido, but in the end, you got to come down. So in the end, this is why I warn against doing this at all, and if it's done, keep the doses low and keep the exposure limited. Next, acne. So, again, what we talked about, the utilization of this agent is going to affect the base ester of testosterone, increasing the free testosterone, definitely leading to aromatization of that base ester of testosterone, and therefore, Understanding that it's a DHT drug itself primarily can get increased acne. There's no question that's going to be on or even funny enough worse off when you're reflexed off the drug despite weaning, despite other agents. And we see that to be a worse scenario. What can, what can you do? Of course, don't use it. Use much less of it. Keep it limitation to uh, the exposure time. Some men can do well with a topical cream. It's an antibiotic combination cream. And I would definitely avoid Accutane because remember, Accutane is definitely liver toxic. Transaminases go up. That's even just on testosterone or no testosterone. And we know esters of testosterone theoretically don't affect, certainly in physiologic replacement doses, the liver transaminases. It's not hepatotoxic. But if you're using an oral alpha-related agent steroid on top of Accutane, I see this. Please be careful with this. Just don't throw in and use that Accutane with an oral anabolic steroid. So much to teach and so much to warn. Gynecomastia moving down into the, into the chest. Despite having negligible to zero estrogenicity, it affects the testosterone ester, as we said, and sexually binding globulin. And albumin, of course, can lead to gynecomastia. Again, just like everything we're talking about, all the extra free testosterone can definitely convert and you men have gynecomastia. I'm concerned for so much utility of aromatase inhibitors, obviously, and selective estrogen receptor modulators, classically tamoxifen, for the side effects. These drugs in polypharmacy with steroids, testosterone, depending on your propensity of what's going on in you, sir, in your body with your medical history. I'm worrying about anxiety, depression. I see it with these add-on drugs. Again, DVTs, pulmonary embolisms, if you have a propensity for a hypercoagulable state, you have to get a good history. Ischemic heart disease, that's myocardial infarction, heart attack, of course, rarely stroke, and tendon ruptures. When we see aromatase inhibitors used, we see it affects the overall systemic uh, body, musculoskeletal, and increase in tendon ruptures. I'm just giving everything uh, to you for this. <clears throat> now, 
the most important, certainly one of the most important aspects of utilizing this combined regimen, heart disease. If you have underlying heart disease, you're going to have to be very careful always for any way of life, not to mention just TRT, but now you're adding Anavar onto TRT. Despite being a mild anabolic androgenic steroid, it is an oral anabolic steroid affecting the lipid panel significantly. It has direct and indirect effects on the coronary artery bed, the endothelial bed, where the plaque may be to destabilize and potentially cause a heart attack. This is so common. And this happens commonly even without steroids. So are you putting this on steroids? Please think about that. Myocardial tissue itself, the meat of the heart itself, that left ventricle I talk about all the time, can also be affected. And the electrical system, we see so much effect on the electrical system. There's such a compromise. There's so much summary of all these drugs interacting on, uh, on men. So if you have an underlying heart disease, you're going to want to know about it. You're going to be in danger. You're going to be in danger just by doing even TRT and you're hypertensive and it disturbs your lipid panel or it makes it hypercoagulable. Very complicated with the red blood cells and all my teachings. Definitely you're going to want to consider doing this, keeping the doses low and limit the exposure over time. You're going to want to check your lipids. Always check that lipid panel. Always get that lipid. You want to get a base. You always want to have this. I say the same stuff over and over. Blood pressure. You want to check the blood pressure. Very interesting how Anivar itself, theoretically, not being estrogenic, theoretically has minimal effect on blood pressure. But remember, people are multifactorial. There's a lot of factors going on. So again, if it's pumping up and increasing your free testosterone, with that conversion and estrogenicity, you can be bloated. You could have intravascular edema. That's hypertension. And it certainly can cause direct effects on the blood vessels. Remember, coronary artery, but also the mean arteries of your, of your body that make up your, your blood pressure. And it can cause vasoconstriction. Again, it's amazing. Not to mention, if you're anxious, your heart rate's up just because of this drug and the add-on drug. These cumulative effects, absolutely amazing. Also look at glycemic index. That's going to be the fasting sugar and a hemoglobin A1C. Next, I would recommend for every man, with or without steroids, really look at these heart issues. Get a coronary artery calcium score. See a cardiologist, a great primary care doctor. Go over it. Blood pressure, cholesterol, sugar. Get a coronary artery calcium score. I can't say it enough. Get an echocardiogram. There are protective therapies and methodologies I can't just give them here. It's unethical to just lump these in. <clears throat> you can get reviewed. Every single man's got a fingerprint. You can get reviewed from this, these systems. <clears throat> and a very good doctor, internal medicine, maybe APRN, a healthcare provider of any sort, is experienced and works as a team leader. Cardiology, and there are lipidologists, board certified lipidologists, at least in America. And these are experts at understanding the lipid progression, the effects on the atherosclerotic plaque that you may have. Please pay attention to that. Next, liver. We're moving down in the system, head to toe, we're taking a systems approach. Liver. This is, Anivar is an oral anabolic steroid, classically 17-alpha alkylated. We know, although it's weaker, in affecting the transaminases and liver effects adversely than anadrol and dianabol, for an example, but it will affect it. And you don't even really know what you're getting because you're getting it from the black market, if you indeed are. So it's limited and I feel transiently where you see the LFTs go up and everyone's checking their labs and yeah, they're up, but they're gonna come down. What is, what's happening? Do you have an underlying liver condition? And what's going to happen over years and years and years if you're cycling on and off these agents and you're actually straining your liver? No one really knows. Get a comprehensive metabolic panel. Great, get, get a great doctor. If you're concerned for liver enzymes, if you're concerned for a liver, Billy Rubin at all, go and see a liver expert. That's a hepatologist, gastroenterologist. You're going to have to, in the future, manage and take part of your own care and use these systems, use these doctors and put it together. 
prostate, moving down into the pelvis, the prostate. Anivar is a DHT-derived drug, lacks the capacity to interact with 5-alpha reductase, so there's no potent dihydroform. But remember, this drug itself is DHT-derived, so that will have some effect on some men's prostatic tissue, causing potential worsening BPH, lower urate tract symptoms, and my lord, if you have prostate cancer, say you're 50 usually or, or older, and you have underlying prostate cancer, even a teeny bit, and you're using any of these drugs, it's going to affect and potentially grow that malignancy. Please get a PSA. Please see a doctor. You can get digital rectal exams. You can, in the end, go and see a urologist. These are fine physicians. They're very, very busy. Of course, they're not going to know the incredible details about all these drugs, but they know, they know the prostate. They know the testicles. They understand intimately, surgically, what's going on. Okay, harm reduction. I don't like finasteride and tutasteride, and those also for the scalp and for the hair too, because if you use them, it's really playing a game blocking DHT receptors, and so many men have a relative finasteride syndrome. I've seen this so many times, I can't tell you, and not just like this with testosterone plus anivar, just coming in just on finasteride and or dutasteride. In my opinion, this is man per man. This is so, so sensitive. And if you're using these meds for this short period, is it really worth it? It's going to affect your mood. It's going to affect your sexual symptoms. There's so many complicated interplay with so much physiology going on. Again, be very careful with that. And in my closure, I understand that there are millions and millions of men using steroids. And classically, this testosterone plus a cycle of Anivar for the summer, just to get kind of lean and buffed up. I understand it's being used. I also understand that there are health consequences. There's so many variable consequences. Sure, if you're young, there's most likely going to be less, but not always. And as you get older, men in their 40s, 50s, 60s, we see men in their 70s doing this, that you're playing with risks. If Again, if you have the underlying heart issues, the prostate issues, the depression, the anxiety. You're just going to worsen it potentially if you do this. So I ask you to thank you so much. Show this around. Let's get comments. Just give a lot of comments on this. We can't get enough comments and truth and openness and education for men in the world that may be doing this classic, classic cycle and they think it's otherwise very, very safe and it may not be. Thank you very much. I really hope this helps.